Bitcoin has had a rough past couple of days. It is still in a overall short-term downtrend, like I've penciled out here. Bitcoin continues to come down and not push above the top end of this range for the downtrend. We saw a large rejection here at about 64,600, another rejection here at about 64,000. And if the short-term downtrend continues, then Bitcoin could actually be below 60K and going back to 58,000 within a couple of weeks. But that being said, that's the short term of what's going on with Bitcoin. I'm Cody the Coin Raptor, and in today's video, I want to talk about what's going on with Bitcoin in the short term, but I also want to talk about what's going on with Bitcoin in the longer term, including a very interesting prediction by Mr. Jack Dorsey, and I also want to go ahead and highlight what whales have been doing with Bitcoin. So Bitcoin right now stuck in this downtrend, and... I personally am waiting for Bitcoin to come back down below 60K, and I do think that there's a, a decent possibility that we'll get another chance to buy Bitcoin below 60K. So um, if you're like me and you're not running out to buy Bitcoin right now and you're waiting strategically for a nice little sell-off, that would also be an opportunity uh, for anybody else who's interested in, in adding to their Bitcoin stash, I do think we're going to get it below 60K here in, in the near term. Not financial advice. Take it for what it's worth. But according to the current trend that we have, the the likelihood of Bitcoin going down below 60K again, I think, is fairly decent. All right. Now, with Bitcoin, there's also our liquidation heat map that we like to cover. So liquidation heat maps... Very interesting in determining where Bitcoin could be going, not to mention when it reaches certain levels of liquidity, we also see explosive price moves as well. So with Bitcoin, the most apparent one we have right here is actually at about 63,000, about 63,600 is almost 400, 300 million dollars or so worth of short liquidity sitting at right about this level right here. If Bitcoin does achieve a nice bounce, if it actually gets an oversold kind of bounce, like we've seen it do in the past, if it does go up to 63k, uh, 60, the this level right here, we could actually see it go and move much higher, we could actually see it probably go all the way back up to 65, maybe push above 65 and, and go a little bit higher than that. But that's only if Bitcoin can actually stabilize and actually find a, a position of support, which currently, it looks like it's having difficulty now, the, one of the reasons why Bitcoin has been faltering so much is because the Bitcoin spot ETFs have been not really uh, seeing much inflow. So we've seen uh, in the past couple of days, not much really going on with that. Uh, today, for instance, the 10th of May, we had a, a negative $100, $100 million uh, outflow basically from the spot ETFs. In fact, the Hong Kong numbers are... Uh, they haven't really moved at all, but I will try to see if I can get some more information on this uh, when this gets updated. But if we look at the long term for the Bitcoin spot ETF, we can see here that we had two really strong days on the on the, the 2nd and the 5th of May. And then after that, it's been kind of muted. There's not really much going on either way. And so the Bitcoin spot ETFs, previously had contributed largely to the the rally that we saw from Bitcoin going all the way up to 72k. Now we're starting to see a little bit more muted price action and we're starting to see outflows from those same spot ETFs. But this isn't news if you guys have been watching my videos. I've been telling you about this all the time. The simple fact is that we've seen significant outflows for some of these spot ETFs such as Grayscale. And in fact, if you go ahead and take a look at what happened with Grayscale, they lost about $100 million of outflows in, uh, in, in today during about 24, in that 24-hour period, they lost about $100 million. But that being said, again, I don't want to focus on the short term because the short term Bitcoin price can go up and go down. This all price action, this whole price action for Bitcoin, this is all normal for Bitcoin. This is not anything too scary. There's nothing that I would be concerned with on the long term for the Bitcoin price. This is just normal price action that we've seen so far with the, with the ups and the downs that come with the market. 
Now, what's interesting is that there is a, an interview that done with uh, Jack Dorsey. Okay, he was the pre- he was the uh, co-founder of Twitter. He actually gave a really cool interview here. Definitely recommend you guys check it out. It's at piratewires.com. But they asked him a very interesting question here at the bottom. They said, what will be the price of Bitcoin in 2030? And he says, at least a million dollars. Okay, very interesting. Jack Dorsey coming out here and saying... He thinks the price of Bitcoin by or in 2030 will be at least a million dollars, okay? It's not surprising when you consider the fact that there are many people like Kathy Wood going out there and also claiming that you're going to see Bitcoin in the million plus range price. But they're saying that this is going to happen in or Jack Dorsey's saying it's going to happen in 6 years, okay? But uh we'll have to see if that actually plays out. Uh I I, I don't I don't I'm not really going to try to put my own opinion on this because I like to be conservative when I talk about Bitcoin price and my own Bitcoin price predictions. Uh, but I have said in the past that I do believe that we can definitely get to 100K, 200K for sure. I think that's very possible. Now, once you start talking about the numbers in the millions, that's kind of outside of of, of what I would reasonably expect uh, for such a short period of time of only six years. But I, I do think it, it is possible at least. But the the main point here is that there are a lot of people who think like Jack Dorsey does that say, okay, well, it's going to become an appreciating asset and especially the fact that it's going to be more valuable than holding uh, dollars or holding fiat currency over that time because it's going to appreciate in value and the dollar is going to depreciate in value. So just very interesting. It's always cool to see some some long-range Bitcoin price predictions. Now, speaking of Bitcoin whales, if we take a look at our Bitcoin whales, uh, the balances for whale addresses, which is something I've been looking at uh, recently, we can actually see that whales have still been adding to their positions. In fact, we saw just from the past couple of days, they only have uh, data going up to about the 8th, but over uh, time from the 7th, May 7th to May 8th, we saw a pretty large increase uh, to the number of uh, of Bitcoin that these whales are currently holding in their wallets. So this is not a huge surprise. We're talking about over 20,000 Bitcoin that they've added over that period of time. And when I get the information, the new information coming out for the past couple of days this week, I will definitely let you guys know. But whales have been adding to their current positions. Now, one whale in particular that I've been talking about uh, in the previous couple of videos has been whale number 12. This guy right here has been adding a significant number of Bitcoin nearly every single day. In fact, today he added a little over 300 Bitcoin into his wallet and this right here is very interesting behavior, I think, just to see these whales load up during times in which most people are selling. Now, do they know something that we don't know? Possibly. But they do see this as an opportunity to increase their bag, to increase their position sizing without paying um, 70K, 70 plus near all time highs. And especially, I think that would be the case if we had another another leg down back to where we were before and about the first or so of May below 60k. I have no doubt that whales are waiting with orders open to get more Bitcoin at those levels. Now for those of the the rest of us who aren't whales, we can actually take a look at the addresses uh, with a balance of at least one Bitcoin and we can see that uh, this level has been increasing steadily until about we hit um, about January or so then it starts actually petering off a little bit, but we're still over a million addresses that hold at least one Bitcoin. I think that's always a good thing. We need more even distribution of Bitcoin and not have such tight concentration of the actual supply of Bitcoin. Next, we like to take a look at the exchange reserve. Exchange reserve over the last month has been very interesting because the exchange reserve, which counts the number of Bitcoin in the exchange wallets, 
is showing us that it's basically been unchanged from the start, uh, or, or I'd say from the last 30 days or so, from April 10th to where we are right now in May 10th, we've seen it mostly stay the same. So we had a, a large number of Bitcoin leaving those exchanges during April, and then it balanced out a little bit. And then we saw basically after the halving, we saw people rushing to sell their Bitcoin and these exchanges, these exchanges adding more Bitcoin after that point. Now, the miners uh, have been one of the cohorts that have been selling Bitcoin. Now, you guys know that after the halving, the miners' rewards were cut in half. So they've actually taken the opportunity over the last month to sell a little bit more of their Bitcoin. They started out the, the uh, last 30 days here with uh, 1.8 uh, million or 1,817,000 Bitcoin. And they ent they ended the month with uh, the last thirty days with one million eight hundred and sixteen thousand Bitcoin. All right, so they've been selling. They continue to sell, and that's one of the anchors that are that's holding the Bitcoin price right now uh, lower than what you would expect. And that's actually pretty evident the stress that miners are going under when you take a look at the Bitcoin hash rate. Okay, the Bitcoin hash rate right now it peaked. Uh, at about uh, 654 exahashes back in April. Now it's all the way down to 580 or so exahashes. So these miners have been taking rigs offline uh, in order to, uh, to meet their needs because they're becoming less and less profitable with less uh, block rewards that are available. So if you take a look at the, the one year, again, it looks very, very nice, nice uptrend. And then as soon as we hit that as soon as we hit the halving, now all of a sudden we're, we're on a nice little downtrend here for the hash rate, okay? So don't get too depressed uh, with this Bitcoin market. This is normal Bitcoin price action. I'm still waiting on the sidelines with cash, waiting to buy more Bitcoin near uh, the targeted price levels that I talked about before. And if you guys are curious uh, of knowing when I actually make my buys, make sure you follow me on Twitter or X. And on threads, I'll post that information in there, and then I will most likely make a video uh, later that day or a couple days afterwards to just uh, to also catch everybody up on YouTube as well. But if you want to see the most up-to-date information, follow me on X. Thank you very much. Have a good night.